excited. I'm so enough excited. Can y'all give my beautiful bride, my God, can y'all give her an incredible, my God, man, we, look at your neighbor, say the Lord has done a whole lot in a year. My God, so we're, we're blessed, man, and we're, we're going to start to celebrate just as soon as we get out of that three o'clock service. Now, matter of fact, we already started celebrating. So we bless God for all that God has done. Miss Ann, you did an incredible job with our cancer. We lift up each of you. Grab your neighbor by the hand as we pray. God Almighty. Brother Mitch, I love the way you did your grace news, sir. I love your grace news as only you could. As heads are bowed, as eyes are closed. Yes, mm. Lord. Yes, sir. God, last week this time, many of us were recovering from wind and rain. Yes, Lord. Last week this time, some of us still didn't have power. Yes, Lord. Last week this time, the flood waters could have shifted in our direction. Yes, Lord. Last week this time, somebody had a car and this week they've been trying to replace what was washed away. But God, in the middle of all of that, I squeeze my neighbor's hand because I'm holding the hand of somebody that survived the storm. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Today, God, I thank you for my neighbor's hand. Because God, my neighbor's hand reminds me that I didn't need Matthew to show up to Virginia for me to know that you're the God who calms storms. Yes. Because God, long before last weekend, you've been bringing me through one storm after another. So God, I squeeze my neighbor's hand to remind my neighbor that they're holding the hand of a survivor. Somebody, God, that's been knocked down, but you picked them up. Somebody, God, that's been broken, but you put them back together. Somebody, God, that has had to cry in the midnight hour, but you dried their tears. So God, I thank you for the life of the hand that I hold. And now, God, I'm crazy enough to believe that I'm going to squeeze favor into my neighbor's hand. God, do something in my neighbor's life this week that literally blows my neighbor's hand. Come on, y'all ain't squeezing it hard enough. God, I squeeze favor into my neighbor's life. God, I squeeze increase into my neighbor's life. In the name of Jesus, right now, God, stir up something in my neighbor's life. And finally, God, I've squeezed and prayed mm, for the person on my right and my left, my front and my back. But while on us, thou art calling, do not pass me back. So now, God, as I prepare to release my neighbor's hand, God, I thank you for what you just released into the life of the hand I hold. So now, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart, let it be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. God, build us up, grow us up, and make us who you called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Now come on, can you thank God for the release? Do me a favor, as you're praising God right through there, can you give three people near you a high five and tell them I'm praising them for your release? Come on, give three people a high five and tell them I'm praising them for your release. The release of favor, the release of power, the release of joy. John Wayne, I thank God. The bar is for the favor. Feed it, wing it, that's on you. Somebody shout release. Amen.
Amen. While you're up on your feet, go with me to the book of Haggai, the book of Haggai. Haggai chapter 2. Y'all, I have enjoyed being in Haggai since last month. My God, I hate that it only has two chapters. Because if I could find a Haggai chapter 3 for next week, God knows I would preach it too. But Haggai chapter 2, as we conclude of the book of Haggai, Haggai chapter 2, beginning at verse 18 and concluding at verse 19. When you found it, shout, we got it. Oh, come on, say it like you're with me. When you found it, shout, we got it. We got it. Amen. You're still looking for it. Say, wait a minute. Verse 18 from the NIV translation reads thusly. Uh, from this day on, from the 24th day of the ninth month, give careful thought to the day when the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Give careful thought. Verse 19. Is there yet any seed left in the barn? Until now, the vine, Pastor Eva, and the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have not borne fruit. Pete, from this day on, I will bless you. Verse 19, A again says, Is there yet may see any seed left in the barn. Base man, as you rest in your seat, Roderick, sir, I want to preach for the next few moments that are mine. Is there anything left? Tamika, did you hear what I said? I want to preach. Is there anything left? Mincy, about a month later, God releases two more prophetic messages to the prophet Haggai for the people of God. In verse 19, the text says, Is there yet any seed left in the barn? I believe, Grace, this is one of the most rooted, pivotal biblical questions that was ever raised. The question of is there boo boo anything left? A prophet because many of us have shown up today wondering do I Clinton have anything left? Shanique do I have any strength left? Monita, do I have any hope left? Do I have any patience left? Do I have any joy left? Do I have any love left? Do I have any time left? Do I have any chances left? Do I have any money left? Do I have, Tasha, any worship left? Uh, can you look at somebody on your room and just ask them, Sister Mosley, do you have anything left? I believe that's the pivotal question that many of us showed up raising today because after all you've been through, Jazz, the question becomes, friend, do you have anything left? Do you have enough faith left to push you through? Do you have enough power left to get you to where God wants you? I need to raise this unequivocal question today. How much do you have left? Watch this. After Lisa, you've seen it all, heard it all, base man said it all, tried it all. Okay, I'm sorry, maybe I got the wrong crowd. After you've seen it all, heard it all, said it all, tried it all, done it all, I dare you to look at everybody on your road and just tell them, don't be fooled by how holy I look right now. Huh? Because if you could look into where I've been, you would understand that I ain't always been where I am right now. And sometimes the where I am right now don't 
really look as good as I make it look. But I wish I had nine of y'all that would slip up one hand and just holler, Grace looks good on you. No, that's the wrong neighbor. Elbow your neighbor and say, Grace looks good on you. Watch, here it is. Y'all, after you've seen it all, heard it all, said it all, tried it all, done it all, smoked it all. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, that, that, that was meant for somebody else. I smoked it all, drank it all, spent it all, and blew it all. Aren't you glad you still got something left? I dare you to just slap fly with your neighbor and say he could have and should have cut me off. But thanks be to God, I've got something left. Watch this. I've seen it all, heard it all, said it all, tried it all, done it all, smoked it all, drunk it all, spit it all, and blew it all. And the question becomes, is there anything left? And how do you respond when life has drained you to the point where Kawanda, you feel like you have nothing left. And let me make sure I got the right crowd in here today. How many of y'all have ever been to the place in life where you just felt like you didn't have anything left to give? You had forgiven Drea as much as you could forgive. You had loved as much as you could love. You had helped them as much as you could help them. You had prayed for them as much as you could pray for them. You had showed up to church and gave God your all as much KT as you could give. And yet you got to a point in your life, Lou, where you said to yourself, Self, I just don't have nothing left to give. How my expectations have been drained. My disappointment seems to overwhelm me. I, sometimes I wish I had three of me to make all of the places, all of the meetings, all of the games, all of the extracurricular stuff. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice that's ever gotten up on a Monday morning and said, God, I ain't got nothing left. It seemed like I just left work yesterday and it's time to do it all over again. I wish I had at least nine of y'all that showed up, drained the day. But you understand that when you get up on Sunday morning, you don't get up to play games. You don't get up for chaos and confusion. But this is where you get your power from. Grab your neighbor by the hand and holler, neighbor, I showed up today to get my power back. Come on, be well, let me press through the text. Let me, let me press through right here. God has caught him by it. God has, Minister Chris, three types of blessings for those of us who have nothing left. Uh, the first blessing that he has, prophet, is the blessing that was wanted. Or just the blessing that was wanted. Let the church shout wanted. Pastor, show it to me in the text. I'm glad you asked me to. I'll go to verse 10 if you don't mind. Uh, verse 10 says, Shout and be glad, daughter of Zion, for I am coming. I will live among you, declares the Lord. Verse 11, Many nations will be joined with the Lord in that day and will become my people. I will live among you and you will know the Lord Almighty has sent you. Verse 12, The Lord will inherit Judah as his portion in the Holy Land. And will again choose Jerusalem. Uh, verse 13. Be still before the Lord. All mankind. Because he has roused himself. From his holy dwelling. Then he said to Joshua. See I have taken away your sin. And I have put fine garments on you. Here it is. Watch this now. Notice beloved. What's interesting there. Is how God seemingly. Is telling the prophet that he's getting ready to shift it. Now go back to Haggai and look at verse 14 one time. 
It says, then he said to Haggai, so it is with this people and this nation in my sight, declares the Lord. I'm in 14C. Whatever they do and whatever they offer, there is the fire. Now, the blessing that was wanted. Here's what's deep. Sus Rios. Holiness is not catching. But uncleanliness is here. Let me say that again. Holiness, angel, is not catching. But uncleanliness is. You can't catch good health from somebody. You can look at somebody healthy all day long, but you can't catch their good health. You're not going to get in shape because, Mason, you look at somebody that's in shape. Because good health ain't something you can catch. But you can catch an infection from somebody. See, y'all missed the shout cue right there because, see, some of y'all trying to hang out with folk that are living holy, thinking that because if you hang out with enough holy folk, you might be able to catch some holiness yourself. Uh, holiness is something you got to go through, and holiness is something you got to be willing to get for yourself. I dare you to high five your neighbor and say, I didn't get all this all by myself. I had to go through some stuff, and a whole lot of us, Sister Mosley and church are trying to catch the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost ain't something you can catch from me. The Holy Ghost is something you have to have spent time with God. But, but, you can catch uncleanness. Have you ever noticed that you can hang out with folk who have bad habits and then you start picking up their bad habits. Watch this. Our disobedience can even pollute our sacrifices. <sighs> Just really what's deep is this, Kim. You can be sacrificing for God and being disobedient at the same time. And what you're sacrificing becomes polluted. Oh, God, I know that's too deep for some of y'all. Thank you, Pastor Eva, for riding with me on that point. Because what we want is we want to be disobedient to God. We want to do what we want to do, the way we want to do it, when we want to do it, and who we want to do it with. And we want God to bless us. But sometimes, and get this, and we've got the unmitigated audacity to say to God, well, God, I'm making a sacrifice. I showed up to church. God, I'm making a sacrifice. I'm paying my tithes. God, I'm making a sacrifice. And you can't figure out why God is not blessing you. Could it be? It's because your disobedience is polluting your sacrifice. Can I get about five of y'all just to holler, unpollute the atmosphere? God, unwind. See, our disobedience pollutes our That's good. That's good. so when you trying to do the right the right thing That's right. but you're doing it for the wrong reasons oh help me in the Holy Ghost God does not get this if you don't hear anything else bless us with what we want he doesn't always bless us with what we want Vanessa but I believe I got about 71 of y'all that can slip up one hand and declare when he sure gives you what you need. Do I have anybody in here that'll testify to that, that you may not have everything you want? But you thank God that he's giving you everything. I wish I had somebody that would declare, Pastor, I'm still waiting on some blessings, but I thank God that he supplies my needs. Maybe we ought to just take about 30 seconds and bless God for him supplying all of our needs. Grab your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, when I'm hungry, he's food. Oh, when I'm down, he picks me 
hallelujah. He supplies me. Y'all don't even know when to shout. Because y'all want to shout off of what God's getting ready to give you. Sometimes you ought to holler simply because God has supplied your needs. High five your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's still supplying my stuff. Wow. Now, now, let me, let me, let me keep pressing here. God doesn't always bless us with what we want. That's right. But he does supply yes. all our yes, he does. needs. Valeria, get this. Somebody should shout because God did not give you Deacon Travis what or who you wanted. Okay, I know, I know. I'm the only one in here that Brother Williams can have a praise party of the stuff horns I thought I wanted. But looking back at it now, I thank God he didn't give me what I wanted. Okay, I missed y'all. Let me preach to the folk in the center. Is there anybody in here that's ever bumped into some of your old classmates and when you looked at them in high school, you thought they were the baddest thing since sliced bread. But now when you look at them 10, 15, 20 years later, when you show up to the class reunion, you just open up your mouth, you speak to them, and you say in the back of your mind, God, I thank you. That when I wanted it, you said no. I tell you to grab the neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I'm going to lean my head back now for the stuff I thought I wanted that God said no to. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice that thought you wanted somebody and come to find out six months later they were in love with crazy? I tell you to look at everybody on your road and tell them that I showed them the crazy. So I'm glad God let crazy state y'all ain't saying nothing. Is there anybody in here that started to walk away from your job because everybody else was walking away? Aren't you glad you stayed? Somebody shout, thank God. He didn't give me what I wanted. Thank God. Amen. See, Ruthie, sometimes you got to learn how to bless him for the stuff. And the people you thought you wanted. That now. But let me give you the second blessing. The first blessing is the blessing of that which was wanted. But the second blessing is that which was withheld. Somebody say withheld. Pastor, show it to me in the text. I'm glad you asked. Look at verse 15. Verse 15 says, now give careful thought to this from this day on. Consider how things were born. Before one stone was laid on another in the temple. Verse 16. When anyone came to a heap of 20 measures, they were only 10. When anyone went to a vine vat to draw 50 measures, get that, to draw 50 measures, there were only 20. I struck all the work of your hands with blight, mildew, and hail. Yet you did not return to me, says the Lord. The blessing that was withheld. Now, three words I need you to type, need you to write. How are you recording your notes? The first word is wastage. Wastage. Let the church say wastage. Now, here's what I want to suggest. I want to suggest that some of you have allowed to survey you, your blessings to be wasted. Say anybody on the sound of my voice, I know you don't want to lift your hand right through there, but is there anybody other than me that'll be honest enough to suggest that, Arjuna, you've had some stuff that you wasted? Yep. I, I, I know, I know that, that that's too honest for y'all because y'all want God and y'all want the saints to believe that you've always made all of the right decisions, all of the right moves, and you've maximized all of your opportunities. But I know I got some real men in here today that'll testify uh, that brothers. Have you 
ever just look at some of the money you spent on? I, I mean, am I the only man in here that's ever looked at some of the money you invested in other people? And now some of the money you helped other folk when they were down, you looked out for them when they were down. And now you can't even get a call from I dare you to look at your neighbor and say, money wasted. Is there any woman in here today that'll testify that you've been guilty of wasting time? That you spent time with some folk, you gave time to some folk, you went out to eat with some folk, you spent all of your time, you tried to counsel her to get her to get out of that situation, you stayed up nights, you left your children at home, cause she said she wanted a better life, only for her to decide she loves doing crazy and went back to crazy, you could have been doing something else with you, is there anybody under the side? Of my boys that's ever wasted time. Grab your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, you can't get that time back. Here it is. First thing is wastage. Oh, but let me press here. The second thing is spoilage. So John Wade, you got wasted, and now you've got spoilage. Some of us have been guilty of allowing blessings. To spoil. That's good. Oh my God. That's good. Now, when something spoils, we're gonna go to Bible study for about a minute and a half. How what usually happens? That's the question. It stinks. It smells. God, man. Now, what usually causes it to spoil? Oh God, man. it's been left. Can you just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor? How much of God have you left out? Oh, see, y'all missed it. See, you wondering why some stuff in your life uh, smells the way it smells and looks the way it looks. Could it be you wondering why some stuff Deacon Derek in your life has gone bad? Could it be that it's spoiled? Some of us got some spoiled friendships that we need to throw out, get rid of. Some of us got some spoiled attitudes that we need to get rid of. Some of us got some spoiled spirits that we need to get rid of. And part of the reason why it's spoiled is because it's been out too long. But I dare to declare today that everything that's spoiled, God is getting my God today. I, 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 I got to give you this last piece. So you, you're guilty of wastage. You're guilty of... Give me 10 minutes and I'm done. I'm doing the best I can. Watch this. Could it be that y'all, maybe God spoiled you. Oh. Yes. Tina, could it be, man, that you've been so blessed, Pete, all your life yeah. until God, Zach, had to take some blessings? Oh, see y'all, see, see y'all don't want to testify. Base man, some of us are going through the season we're in now because Roderick, we had gotten to the place where Tino, you had gotten so used to being as blessed as you were, to being able to get your hat done when you wanted, to being able to go get your nails done when you wanted, to being able to eat when you wanted, to being able to go when you wanted. God said every now and then, I gotta cut that stuff off to remind you that I was the one that gave it to you in the first place. I wish I had somebody that would testify today that God has been spoiling you and got my God. I, 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 I'm giving it. Could it be, could it be that that's the problem with this generation we're raising? Yes, that, that many of us as parents, 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 I'm talking to the pastor now, many of us as parents, uh, we spoil our children so much because we wanted to give them the stuff that we didn't have until they lost the value of being my God today. I wish I had about five parents in here that know your children are better off than you had it. How that I wish you would just slip up one hand and just declare, I thank God they had to go through what I had to do. And ain't it crazy, Lisa, that the kids don't want to hear your story? 
and people don't want to hear what you have to go through in order to get where you are. All they want to do is be able to get the blessing of my God. But I tell you to pull on your neighbor and say, neighbor, it took a whole lot of praying for me to get the stuff I got. It took a whole lot. I wish I had a mama in here that would testify. You ain't always had it as good as you got it right. Eight minutes, eight minutes. So, the blessing with hell because of wastage, spoilage, and then shrinkage. Wasted, spoilage, shrinkage. Take your time. Is anybody in here going through a, a shrinkage? Just, just tap somebody in and tell them I make shrinking it look real good. Okay. Anybody in here can slip your hand up and say you're circled and even shrunk. I mean, you 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 went from having a whole a whole lot of. Anybody in here used to be in the house where everybody hung out at, and now you just excited when you can have a minute by yourself. Oh my God. I tell you to give your neighbor a high five and say, God will bless you in the shrinkage. Anybody in here used to be the person that everybody came to on the job. Everybody wanted to talk to you about their problems. Everybody wanted to talk to you about what they're going through. But now, Tasha, you thank God for a few moments of peace. I tell you to grab your neighbor's hand and just pull it real good, Mason, and say, shrinkage ain't always bad. Because when God shrinks your circle, that means God's getting ready to blow up your life. I wish I had three of y'all that would lead all God. I, 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 got, I, got, I got to finish this here. The prophets were devoured and destroyed. Our expectations were met by our limitations, which led to our frustrations. So because you had expectations that were met by limitations, in other words, what you were expecting to happen Jamal didn't happen and so because it didn't happen it led you to getting mad because it didn't happen could it be God was praying that what he didn't do would cause you to do something else so Ruthie sometimes God don't do a thing because he waiting on you to do it. So while you praying for God to do something, God is praying, KT, for you to do something. Well, well, I tell some smoking. You looking at me saying, well, what is God expecting me to do, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. God is expecting you to repent. Uh oh. See, see, see. Ooh, he got real quiet right through there. I only got about five people talking about preach now. Because don't nobody want to repent. Everybody want to be blessed. But don't nobody want to say, God, I'm sorry. Everybody wants the prosperity. But nobody wants to say, God, I'm wrong. Maybe grace God is saying, Mama, it's time for some folk to repent. Lord, I'm sorry for being disobedient. Lord, I'm sorry for being out of your will. Oh, look how quiet it got. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you look like the billboard for repentance. All of us in here have something we need to say. Y'all y'all looking at me, y'all looking at me like y'all upset with me. Right, let me show, let me show it to you. Let me show it to you before I finish. See, let me show it to you. I'm gonna show this to you. Then we're gonna get ready to get out of here. 17. I struck all the work of your hands. Blight, mildew, and hail. Could it be for the seven of y'all that all hell is broke loose? Yeah. Could it be it was on purpose? Yeah. Because the Bible says yeah. when I did it, you still didn't turn. Yeah. Grace, I'm just 
talking to Grace. I ain't talking to nobody individually. Maybe God is expecting repentance. But not only repentance. Maybe God is expecting revival. Oh, grab your neighbor by the hand and say, Neighbor, I believe this is a good time for our church to enter revival. Or grab somebody else because that's the wrong neighbor. Say, Neighbor, I feel a revival spirit in my mouth right now. Y'all still ain't saying that. Look at the person behind you and say, Neighbor, after you've repented, it's time for revival. Grace, could it be that the reason why we've gone through all this hell has been because God wanted us to repent. And after we repented, God said, now it's time for revival. I wish I had five folk that would leap to your feet and lift up one hand and say, God, I'm ready for revival. Revive my mind. Revive my spirit. Revive my faith. Revive my joy. I'm waiting on about seven of y'all on the right side to catch revival. Oh, wait a minute. Y'all got Baptist on. Y'all bring revival. in your heart. Grab somebody by the hand and say, neighbor, come on, let's ride that. Say, neighbor, I feel a revival in my mouth. Call, revive my money. Call, revive my mind. Call, revive my shout to rain. Since you lie to me, send this to Charlotte, to my boy Big Mac. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, when God sends a test, he just getting you ready for a testimony. Go to two people, stop five words, and tell them you just stepped in to your revival. Give three people a high five and tell them revival, 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 revival. Revive my mind, revive my joy, revive my pride, revive my heart. Somebody call a revival, revive. Do me a favor, put your arm around the neighbor and say, neighbor, my church just step in the revival. My bank account just got revived. My marriage just got revived. My children just got revived. Shout yeah! Look at your name and say you're looking at a new me. Somebody holler revival. Now, let me get this to you, Willie. Let me get this to you, Willie. So what are you going to do? You're going to plow. You're going to plant. And you're going to prove. Hear what I say? You're going to plow. Plant. Could it be grace that we planted on ground that hadn't been plowed? And see, Jure, whenever you put good seed, Tasha, on unplowed ground, it won't ever. So, so, so maybe God is saying, Adrian, it's time to plow. 
Then Lisa, we gone. And then Dominique, we gone. See, you don't have no problem plowing and plant. But Tanya, you hate fruit. But most, in order to get some stuff to grow, you got to be willing to cut some stuff off, my. I'm finished, I'm finished. You, you've been looking for a miracle. Jamal, you've been looking for a reward. Because you've been trying to live right, you've been trying to do right, you've been trying to be holy. So, AG, you keep saying, God, why not reward me? I came to tell you today, sweet Luke, that that man, God ain't gonna reward you, but he gonna give you a word. See, Arjuna, you show up and we shout Tasha, Nicole, because we want a reward for being obedient. And God says, Prophet, I'm going to give you a mirror, but I'm going to give you a word. What's the word? Verse 19. The Bible says, from this, from from this, from this day, this ain't John knowledge to hear this straight from the book. From from this day, from Valeria, from from this day, from this day, Ruthie, I will bless you. Sister Mosley, from this day, I will bless you. Come and rest on your feet. Come on, come on. I need you to open up your mouth and declare everything from this day forward. God's getting ready to bless me. Come on, y'all, y'all ain't saying nothing. I need about five of y'all to lift up your hands all over this place and declare from this day forward, God's going to bless me. From this day forward, Karanda, you're going to walk in the blessings. Be confirmed from this day forward. Mason, from this day forward. Anybody ready to walk into a perpetual place? A blessing. Come on, slip your hand up and declare, God, I'm ready for you to bless me. Come on. I'm gonna live my life. 